to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 6th, the fantasy footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, for whatever reason, Jason has been trying to get a trade done in our dynasty league for, I guess, the better part of the day. I did a trade yesterday. Since that point, he's been jealous. And, um... You wait till the intro of the show is hit bef- to get the deal done. Uh, well, I was that was not under my control. Uh, that was so you weren't the one that hit the button. I wasn't the one who hit accept. Uh, I was working it before the show early this morning, all the way up through sitting here, so texting you traded, and all that. But he hit accept right when the music was playing. Yeah, this is a bold trade. It's a blockbuster trade. He sent Jordan Addison. A 2025 first rounder, a 2026 first rounder, and got back Chris Olave. Yeah, Addison is going to be probably a slow uh, start for the next two years. You know, as he's got McCarthy coming into his own, he's clearly, you know, he's the number two for his team uh, with a rookie quarterback this year. I'm in like championship mode. My team is very good, and I've been a little, uh, you know, looking at your guys' roster. Mike, last year you made a bold trade. Very yeah, similar. It reminds me of this. Yeah. Where you said two firsts and I, I believe another it like was, Pittman. Well there, yeah, there was a few players, but Pittman and at that time Quentin Johnston, who had not it, yet it was, failed. He had not ruined people's uh years. But yeah, like Michael Pittman, a couple firsts. And you went and got C D Lamb. Right. C D Lamb leveled up, became the alpha we all hoped he would become. Yep. And you won the championship. And then yesterday, Mr. Holloway made a trade yeah, I, just, I did what i always do i got a couple old people to come yeah, and play on the yeah. roster <laughs> you, you you got amari cooper and ramondre <laughs> yeah you got rid of your future picks for uh um, oh i don't like for those no you i do don't not. like picks and so yeah today i i made that move because uh this this helps my second flex and now i'm feeling pretty pretty good okay. i just hope olave takes that step you know d- does i that. don't think he's the one you gotta worry about what do they call you, it are you thinking i should be worried about addison no, exploding? no, Derek Carr. Oh well, sure. That, that dude is, stinks. That is, that is obviously the the hardship. I wish he had Dak Prescott um, or better, but uh, you know, sometimes you've got to slightly overpay to just get a deal done. And I don't know yeah. if this is overpaying or not. These are future picks, so it's, Geo, it's fun. Geopolitically speaking, is this like this is like an arms race that's going on? One hundred percent. This is not like I. If you guys aren't doing these things, I'm not doing this thing. I'm just like, okay, my team's already nice. good. Yeah, I'm staying calm. There but. have been many times in fantasy where that has happened. Like even in our league of record where I make a trade and I win the trade in my mind and in reality maybe. But because of that trade, you make a trade. Yes. So I have to think of the net result of <laughs> your team getting better. You are my great motivator, Andy yeah, Holloway. Yeah. All right. Well, that one will be interesting to look back on over the next couple of years. Mike, what was your reaction? Did you think Jason to the trade? I mean, it's like <clears throat> I it the, my feelings on Olave it's just it's it's so difficult. Uh I mean, it's similar to Garrett Wilson. It's very of, similar. Of when I watched this player, like I I think Garrett Wilson's a better player than Chris Olave after last year. But it's like watching Olave it should work. It, like this guy has all the traits that I'm looking for of a true number one wide receiver. Give him good targets; he should dominate. And yet, it was not close to domination last year. And for me, saying Derek Carr stinks, Derek Carr is much better than what Garrett Wilson was playing with at quarterback last year. So it's last year was is just it was so disheartening. But this is what you, I don't I don't hate the move. It's a gamble. It's a risk for sure. Because because there is a world where Jordan Addison this year with J.J. McCarthy or or even with Sam Darnold a combo, Jordan Addison could just flat out end up being better than Chris Olave. Like it, it to me, it could happen. It's not going to project. Would shock me. Uh, it wouldn't shock me, 
because like, Jordan Addison had a fantastic year. He definitely would shock Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick question of the day. Like, it better shock you if you're making that trade. If you're like, yeah, I can see that, then you should not have made that trade. Uh, Fred and Charlotte wrote in a quick question for us. How is your ADP, which is average draft position, compiled? Are there different ADPs for different sources, such as ESPN, Sleeper, Yahoo? Where, uh, What do you use for your rankings? Uh, so, you know, you can go and look at the Ultimate Draft Kit. You can see... Uh, ADP reference throughout, Mike. So sure, you know you want to answer this one. Yeah. So ADP average draft position that we don't gather that. That's gathered by the the platforms as players are doing their mock drafts. You know, it's moving players around in their algorithms and all of those things. So, and they all have their own. We primarily use Sleeper as our platform that we play on. So that's the ADP that we reference the most. But all of them have valid ADPs and perhaps a an overlooked tool if you have the ultimate draft kit and you just haven't happened to seen it. Funny enough, uh, I stumbled upon it over the offseason. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot we had this. Uh, it's a, a full platform comparison where it shows you Sleeper, ESPN, Yahoo, and right now the, the uh, uh, underdog ADP lets you – kind of see, hey, I really like this player, and if I'm playing on Yahoo, ADP-wise, it looks like I can get a discount or this player is being overdrafted, uh, et cetera. But the the value of ADP, it's it's actually pretty valuable. Uh, like the, the fantasy football players, we're getting smarter. We're getting better at projecting who's going to be a good player. And it's like the correlation of an early-round pick to – a smashing success that is extremely high and it really just slowly the, the correlation of ADP players being the better picks it just slowly goes down until you know pick 60 or so it seems to be like right after that is where the ADP because these are unknown for the most player or for the most they are unknown players and that's where the ADP can't really tell you who's going to be good. And that's why we say in the early rounds, don't overdraft players just because you want them. Make sure you're paying attention to the ADP. That's what everyone sees is the list right in front of you as you're drafting. And no matter how hardened or seasoned of a fantasy football veteran you are, the ADP list can still get in your brain of like this player should have been, should have been drafted by now. So – for the most part, ADP is a is a very good guide, um, and you're just kind of weighing which of those early players you prefer over the other ones, and then after pick 60 or so, just start swinging for the fences a little bit. Of course, not crazy with ADP, but that's where you're going for the real upside of unknown players. Uh, we recommend tier-based drafting. Yeah. Where we subdivide players into separate buckets or tiers where – you know, you can make a decision to maybe pass on somebody that is in the same tier uh, when there's a number of players left in that bucket and take maybe one of the remaining ones around later. It's a good way to go about that thought process with, with relation to ADP. Yeah, and you don't get fixated on one player name, and then that player goes, you're like, well, my plan is destroyed. It's, no, I knew four names who I just want one of those guys. Later oh, in the Oh Mike. Oh, nice try. What? You're gonna here's what's gonna really happen. You're gonna say, No, I want one of those four guys. And it's gonna be all four of them that go, and that last one will be the guy picked right before you. You know the how that's work that's yes, how it works. That does happen. That's how it works every draft. <laughs> Why do we do this? In yes in the mock draft on Tuesday, later on, like there's a player like Calvin Ridley. His ADP does not reflect anything remotely close to where I think his true value is. He's probably 10, 12, 13 players ahead, like behind where I think he should be. And, you know, gambling at that stage, making the call on the player that you want, realizing that more players are going to make their maybe more judgment calls at that point in time. I Like you said, I'm fine taking players way ahead of ADP yeah. at that point. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we keep it updated. Um, that tool is very valuable, so navigate over there to the uh, ADP platform comparison tool, which will get filled in more and more as the season goes on. And um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a good answer to the question. News and notes from around the league. 
Well, the 49ers have signed Christian McCaffrey to a two-year extension, averaging $19 million per season. Okay. Wow. That's a lot for a running back. There, There is only one Christian McCaffrey. What about a running back and a wide receiver combined and yeah. one superhuman? That's yep. a pretty good deal. Yeah, it seems like it. I don't think that's a – I mean, that's totally fair. It's, and this was a reward. He's the Offensive Player of the Year. There's only been, like, you know, five of those in franchise history for the 49ers. It's, it's wild, a player at his age, but there are Hall of Fame – outliers from time to time and that's what he is he's so important to the offense now when when this move happened mike well one i was happy as a dynasty manager yeah, Christian yes. McCaffrey. yeah i get that but you had an immediate reaction which you said something like debo is toast yeah which could be debo could be Ayuk. like the it's, basically a huge financial investment on both of those wide receivers won't happen when you're spending so much money on Christian McCaffrey. So one of those two yeah. after this year. It that's the way it, it's trending. Uh, uh and this is just the pick pick which wide receiver you prefer. I mean, like I think Brandon Ayuk will be the one who gets the contract from uh the extension from the San Francisco 49ers. Younger player. Debo's always uh banged up. Great player, but you have to like financially you do have to make some hard decisions. And yeah, there are teams like the Dolphins and the Eagles, who are, you know, they're a huge amount of their salary cap is committed to two wide receivers, but the 49ers have a huge amount of money considered or, or lied. Or, what am I trying committed to say? To. Committed, thank you, to Christian McCaffrey. So, like, he's he counts as one of their elite players. I, I think they can go through this year and then revisit it, but it's, it, it's going to be really it's fun tough, to watch. It's man. I – I think that you can replace Ayuk a lot easier than Debo in this offense. That's the only side that leads me to think that, you know, Shanahan would want the versatility of Debo over Ayuk, but we will find out. Nick Chubb spoke for the first Debo time. Debo also, like, he's 28. Yeah, like, he's, no, it makes a big difference. So, heading, being 29, heading into next year, I think that should factor into the decision as well. And whether Ayuk continues to have an outlier 18 right. plus a catch season. Nick Chubb spoke for the first time since his season-ending knee injury. Whoa, that's crazy. No, he's spoken <laughs> to other people before. Okay, all right, because that would have been insane. I'm not talking for months. <laughs> we thought it was just his knee, okay. but his voice, it was stolen. For those, at, for those at home that haven't watched the last, like, five minutes of this show, I'm pretty sure... Four minutes and 45 seconds of it was Jason coughing profusely. Yeah, what, yeah. what happened? So he inhaled a, some water. I inhaled water. I got it in the wrong pipe. Okay. And so I was dying over here. And he's he's not said a thing. He is, he's like Nick Chubb. He's uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and his first entry in back into the world was, that's was it, amazing. It was awesome. <laughs> so Swish. Chubb said he doesn't have a timeline for his return to the field. Yeah, I don't. I mean, sucks. this is not. Um, it's disappointing if you expected Nick Chubb to come out and say like, "I'm going to be ready to go." I guess you could have been optimistic about that. I wasn't planning that. I wasn't planning on that either. But players often are the most optimistic about their like. These are elite humans who are used to elite things happening to their body. So for him to like, it's it's not pessimistic, but it's not overly optimistic which kind of says some things to me as well yeah speaking of adp jerome ford right now is the 134th player drafted and he projects right now to basically be a starting running back that i think so i like deontay foreman to me you think it, he's like, gonna come in and i think usurp? It, I, I look jerome ford's gonna have the leg up because he's on the team they've already seen what he can do and he played he played admirably in the replacement of Nick Chubb. RB but, seventeen last year, but Foreman, all things included, like Deontay Foreman. Foreman's, is a, a, Foreman's done. He's a bizarre player because <laughs> he's still because been good uh, every he's time. been on two. He's now on his third team in three years. Those previous two teams, whenever he was on the field, you're like, "What? Well, that's <laughs> that's a good player," but no teams want to keep him around. And last year wasn't as uh, spectacular as the year before when we were impressed. Like, he was 4.5 a carry in 2022, went on that run, 
we were kind of like, okay. Oh, Foreman had. I last remember. year he was 3.9. He didn't play for reasons beyond, the, beyond yes, his no, injury. Yeah, there, there's, there's off the field stuff. I think you you had to bring somebody in to be insurance. So I, you're I just, you're very in on Jerome Ford. I'm very in on him relative to De- Deonta Ford. Okay, well, well, that's interesting then. And like Jerome Ford as the RB forty two right now over on Sleeper. The price is the price is going to change with the Nick Chubb news closer to camp when he's not active. Is my thought. Yeah, yeah, it, it will go up, but. You know, if you're doing best ball drafts or something right now, he's still a bargain. Very undervalued because th- this injury bargain to Nick, in trades too in dynasty. This injury to Nick Chubb when it happened was like, uh, is this the last time we'll ever see him play yeah. again? So now it, it does not appear that's the case. They've restructured his contract. They're letting him come back where he can still make the money if he has the performance. Uh, but for the most part, he's taking a pay cut. He's not going anywhere. He's going to come back to the field. But that level of injury is not one where. You know, like, where do you draft Nick Chubb this year? I think that's a really interesting question. For me, he's basically almost off my board because I don't. it's not a matter of what week is he active for. It's who is he when he's there. Yeah, it, it'll, be, um, it'll be interesting if you go from the time when Chubb left last year, which he went out in week two. I'll throw week two out, even though it was good for Jerome Ford. Um, it was the receptions that made a big difference too. He caught 46 passes. Um, he was pedestrian, pretty pedestrian, but had like a lot of just barely double digit performances. We also g- didn't have a quarterback. So right. Like, there's, a, there's not a lot of, uh, templating you can do right now with Cleveland. Like, no, it's difficult without Chubb with Watson, with Judy. Like we talk about Najoku and his numbers with Watson, they're small sample Coopers with Watson, small sample. Like there's. We want to know. We know that they just extended their head coach and their general manager. We know that they battled their way to what uh, ten and seven in a playoff spot, despite having four quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So I do think that there's some fundamental uh, competency that's going to come out of that club this year. It's just hard to hone in on one guy. Jason, I got, I got some bad news. Oh no, dealing with a minor shoulder injury because of the weight room. Chris Olave. <laughs> no, for real? Is this like No, it just happened. Twelve oh seven. I mean what? it's it's uh he injured his shoulder in the weight room a few weeks ago. Oh it's just now this, being reported. And this is lingering? Is this still going know. on? Is he bad? I don't know. Multi week injured shoulder? I don't know. I'll give you a first for him though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the I'll take the risk on. I'll be your friend. All right. Well, heal up, <laughs> Chris Olave. I uh I paid a I, I paid a premium. I, it, and I, I, did, I had the same thing happen to me when I traded for Kyron, and then like two seconds later, <laughs> it doesn't feel good, it even just, if it's not a big deal. Uh, quick follow up to Nick Chubb. I didn't want to, I wasn't sure, uh, so I didn't bring it up. But Nick Chubb back in the college days had a catastrophic yes. knee injury. Like, Horrific. A knee injury where you're like, well, this kid is done. Like, he won't have a college career, he won't have a pro career. Managed to come back, and it was the same knee. Yeah. So, it, it, so this is, this was a, already repaired knee that then got shredded up again. And there's a big difference between being a college-aged yes. kid going through that when your body heals a lot nicer than being an older gentleman at 28 years old. We saw this with um, Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles had an early career knee injury where he came back the next year and was awesome. He's one of the, you know, him and AP are that, like, first year back from ACL, no problem. Later in his career... I don't know if it was the same knee or not, but that one took a toll on him. Did the in the UDK injury report, Betts mentioned that uh, there are a lot of implications for his life after football, and the risk of developing arthritis is very yeah. high based on this injury. It, it there, I mean, like belief in Deonta Foreman, with regardless, like the fact that they really didn't do anything to address the running back room is that's that's why I'm holding my judgment on this these on comments for, from for Nick Chubb. Chubb in June like he he probably is not in a position where he should speak about a timeline but the I'm he, saying for you know, the for the Cleveland Browns the the just the overall risk as a team like if you're going to be betting on Nick Chubb at all which they were a, a, a credit to the, the franchise they could have just said not our problem anymore good luck Nicholas uh, hope you find somewhere that will help you pay for your rehab. They 
fixed his contract so that he could stay with the teams, you know, get all the perks of being an NFL player. But to have to have the running back room that they have and have any kind of bet on Nick Chubb without doing something else is is strange to me. It's because it's did. Jerome, it's Deontay Foreman, Pierre Strong Jr. is still there. Uh, I mean, and they like Kareem Hunt is gone. Still. Naeem Hines. Naeem Hines is still. It's. I want to give more. Strange. I don't want to just do the pull quote. Like he also made the same in the same conversation. He said he likes where he's at. He said I'm where I need to be. So you know where he, where where he was just he did, located? Uh, <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Was he at home or was he at uh, the facility? I think I liked you better when you were choking. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a break. Come back with Keep Trade Cut. Keep Trade Cut. All right, let's jump in, boys. Uh, keep trade cut decisions for 2024. We're looking at redraft dilemmas. We'll start this first one. We'll call it uh, the second round wide receiver riddle. All three of these players are going back to back to back in the middle of the third round, according to the sleeper ADP as of today. That would be Drake London at 206, D uh, Devontae Adams at 207, and Brandon Ayuk at 208. You know, these are um, very different players. You had a big season from Ayuk. You had a, a great finish, but a disappointing year from Devontae Adams, but you have the pedigree and the history. And then you have Drake London, who a lot of people are imbuing future fantasy value to because of the change of the offensive coordinator position, quarterback. Um, this is not a close one for me. So my keep is very much Devontae Adams in this situation. This is not a close one to me either. It is very much Drake London in this situation. Okay. Mike? Uh, my rankings and projections would have it be Devontae Adams. But, he, man, he, with, uh, with his age combined with the amount of seasons that he has played and the quarterback situation, if it's Gardner, okay. But Devontae Adams – freaks me out um but he's probably he's still probably my keep of the three if if it's not Devonte adams then it would be brandon Ayuk for me really so you're yeah. you're lowest on drake london so we you know obviously when kirk cousins signed there was a lot of hullabaloo i think drake london probably the pendulum got swung maybe even too high um on drake london and you know he's going to be the next greatest thing ever that being said i i I mean, when I statted guys out, he ended up in my top 10 at wide receiver. Drake London has shown everything that you really want to see on the field. His stats haven't been that different than Garrett Wilson. Obviously, much fewer total targets um, than Garrett Wilson, but he's done almost as much with them. He, he, you know, he hasn't ever looked like he doesn't belong, but he's had a quarterback that couldn't get him the ball. And now you go to Kirk Cousins, who obviously we know can support a star wide receiver. So when I look at these three guys, I go, well, Drake London is, you know, the target market share for these three players. Devontae Adams and Drake London, they've got it on lockdown. We don't know about Ayuk. Ayuk, you know, is going to be on a low passing he volume He was hyper-efficient last year. Yeah, he was hyper-efficient, but he's it's a low. catch 75 passes. Right, and that's like, so he's, he's the clear out to me between these two guys is Drake London and Devontae Adams, but I would rather take the one who has a quarterback upgrade versus a quarterback downgrade who is young coming into his prime versus – old going to age out at some point so it's clear for my personal preference it's drake london for sure if i'm on the clock with these three guys as the top in the adp uh left on the board i would trade Devonte adams because i i do think that there are plenty of people that believe he's just going to keep you know wash rinse repeating what he's done for feels like forever and then i would cut brandon Ayuk. yeah it, i mean adams was 103 for 1100 last year with the quarterback troubles. I mean, we saw Pittman have a lot of success with Gardner Minshew. He, you know he's going to get the targets. Like you said, he got it on lockdown. So we just have a difference of opinion on – because it's such a high investment, I feel like the risk is higher with Drake London. The risk is and certainly so be, higher with Drake and London. And so depending on your roster, your first pick, are you taking a chance with that first pick? You know, it's nice to want the target share for Drake London. My fear is it's like 
you know, you do have other players there that you're going to see touch the football a lot. You know, Bijan Robinson coming out with all this conversation of his McCaffrey usage, and you know, it was a request from Kirk Cousins to bring in Darnell Mooney and Kyle Pitts and the you know pub he gets. I do, I don't think it's necessary for Drake London to be, you know, uh, a hyper targeted, high volume guy for them to succeed. But I do feel like that can't happen. You know that Las Vegas can't succeed without Adams doing that. Right. So. Eh, it's a difference of the way you want to build your roster. For the question for Drake London is not the the necessity in the offense, which will be it's going to be a better offense. This will be a more Rams esque type of an offense. Uh, it's does he is he so good that he demands that the offense runs through him? Like that's how you that's the difference between elite players. Is there's going to be other good players, but are they so? overwhelmingly better than everybody that you have no choice but to throw it to him and that I Brent Brandon I you real quick I, I'm I'm with you Jay I'm actually I'm going to trade no I'm not with you I'm going to trade Drake London because I think that he's the people are, are more interested in him but for for Brandon I last year was outlandish in, in terms of efficiency uh catching 71 percent of his pa of of his targets having nearly 18 yards a catch I don't expect it to be like that, but he's he's a, a, a interesting player to me because as a rookie, twelve point nine points per game in twelve games. Twelve point nine is is fantastic. Last year he was thirteen point two and finished as the wide receiver fourteen. But the year before that, he was at eleven point one yards per game. He's really had one down year, and that was his second year in the league. For those who weren't around. In 2020. Did you mean points per game? Yeah. Did I say something different? It just seemed like 11.1 yards per game would be oh, too low. Yeah. yeah, no, no. It would. It would. Points per game. In his sophomore year, if you weren't around for it, he got completely doghoused by head coach. Jason was around for Kyle it. Kyle Shanahan. Jason was in on him because in 12 games, he was averaging almost 13 points per game in a half point scoring format. The next year, human stuff entered the realm, and he was – by reports being lazy at practice, just not getting along with the coach. So he, it looked like his career was done, and then eventually as that season went, started to turn things around. My point being of Brandon Ayuk has actually been really, really good for fantasy football, and but I don't think that his, the way that we think about him or his fantasy finish matches how good he has actually been. And... Don't get over, uh, don't overemphasize the yards per catch because two years ago it was 13 yards per catch, very reasonable, wide receiver 15. I agree completely that my being lower on Brandon Ayuk is not indicative of the quality of the player. Okay. He is awesome. It's the situation, the system, the, the low passing, and the hyper efficiency he has to have to repeat. Yeah, and it's keep trade cut, so you're kind of right. stuck picking one. Um all right, let's go with this one. Uh, three running backs on brand new teams. They are currently back to back to back on our consensus twenty twenty four rankings. Keep trade cut. Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, and the Gus Bus. <laughs> and um, this is a funny three pack. I mean, this three pack was mo way more fun to talk about like four years ago. Yeah, when Gus Edwards was about to start a season as the the starting running back in Baltimore, and what a great couple days that was. Um, look, you you know my answer. I'm you know I'm going to cut. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know we're on opposite sides on Aaron Jones. We're on opposite sides on Aaron Jones. We are, and I but, think but it the, makes it, it makes you want to cut Aaron Jones, which is why I pause. Yeah. I'm trying to be unbiased and just look at the actual players here. Like Eckler, it's a huge question mark there. Um reunited with his offensive uh, or with Anthony Lynn, who he was with in Los Angeles has an opportunity in the passing game should, but really don't know what that's going to look like with Brian Robinson, who I think was very good last year. Gus Edwards, it's all in front of him, but most of his like years are behind him. And then Aaron Jones, you know, they let him go. They moved forward with Josh Jacobs. I do think it's interesting because you're very, you've been very negative on Josh Jacobs, mm -hmm. and you don't believe in him. And this is the same team that also said we are going to 
get rid of Aaron Jones to bring in the guy that you don't believe in, and you still believe in Aaron Jones. So it's the process that that went about. They tried to re-sign Aaron Jones first. They before bringing in Josh Jacobs, Aaron Jones wouldn't take the pay cut. They let him go. Then they went after another running back because they said but we they, lost Aaron Jones, who was really good for us. So how well, good was he? How good was he? Well, that, the last six games, counting the playoffs. He had 17 opportunities, 24, 21, 27, 22, 24. Super important. He had five straight rushing yard games of over 100. He he didn't he didn't lose anything. Close enough. But but but, but you're taking the onus off the team. You're like, oh, he didn't take the pay cut, so they got rid of him for this guy I don't like. Like the team could have paid him. And like, don't take a pay cut if you think that that's what you've got. Like, why not just pay the guy that's so great? Why replace him with a guy that you personally do think because struggles? I have so much respect for how the Packers run their organization. I would have done the 100% same thing. This is an older back. They brought in a younger back. I mean, it, Josh Jacobs, when I say that he, he is not someone that I think, like I'm not positive he's lost anything. I just see the path. He was very inefficient last year. He was my fantasy wild card because he could easily, I mean, the Josh Jacobs could be awesome this year, I, I, and I'll, I'll take the L on that. Um, I, I lean towards him not being, but – Aaron Jones just didn't look like he lost a, lost a step. You look at Aaron Jones versus Austin Eckler last year. You know, obviously Aaron Jones was injured and didn't have a great fantasy season in, in totality, but when he was out there, he looked great. He Austin had a, he Eckler, had a, sometimes. He had a bad, yeah, sometimes. You're, you're, you're a, not remembering the – He had a uh, really bad run in the middle yeah. of the season in between multiple injuries. But, yeah, it, you can at least explain it away with injuries where Josh Jacobs – I, like I don't remember like a, a catastrophic ankle injury at some. Maybe I'm misremembering it. Uh, I will be trading Aaron Jones in this situation to Jason. <laughs> I will be keeping Gus Edwards because I feel like the offense is built around it. And I'm gonna go for the touchdowns, and I'm gonna cut Austin Eckler and just not have any commander stink on on, on the roster. With the uh, just a follow up real quick to what what the Packers are doing, they they have to sign Jordan Love very soon. Like so, they're gonna be. Jordan Love's gamble, or I guess whatever, both of their gambles, but Jordan Love, his bet on himself is going to turn into a gigantic contract because he is technically under contract this year, like this year. And 2025 is one of those weird void things. So, Did you see the numbers with the wide receiver core compared to what Jefferson's deal yeah, is? Yes. That they have like $12 million guaranteed to their current wide yeah, receiver room? Yes. Yeah. And is Jefferson has what a – what was the number of guaranteed money for Jefferson? Oh, it was 110 like 110, million? something like that. That's wild. That's amazing. An amazing job by that team. And then did you also see that Tyreek Hill had to say that being greedy is not going to help your team? <laughs> Tyreek Hill on his gigantic contract was – that was very funny. Anyways, sidebar, back to the players. These are all philosophically different players. Gus Edwards – is he good? At this point, I don't know. But the opportunity is so incredible, and the depth chart is completely beatable. Austin Eckler, he should still work as a pass catcher. And then Aaron Jones, to me, is the one who has the most juice left. But he's got a a young player behind him in Ty Chandler that can really earn reps. Like Ty Chandler should be on the field a good amount for the Vikings if they're doing things right. So having to choose... Yeah, what's your final between keep between them? Cut? Oh my goodness, <laughs> I, I guess, I guess I'm keeping Jones. I have Eckler just a few spots ahead of Aaron Jones, but I guess I'm going to take Aaron Jones here and trade Gus. It, the Gus situation just it never works. It never ever works. An old man changing teams. To be the guy, and for all the reasons of, there's no one else there. The volume has to be there. That's we all scream into the mirror of why didn't this work yet again? So that's that's my fear. I'm gonna keep Jones. I think he's best. so. You're cutting Gus Bus. That's what you just said. Uh, I mean, you didn't yeah. say it. No, I think like you avoided the last I, one. I think I'm cutting Gus. That is that is where I am to keep Aaron Jones. Trade Austin Eckler. Cut Gus only because Austin Eckler is a few spots ahead in ADP than Gus Edwards. So trade value should be higher. <laughs> Who scores the most touchdowns among the three? Gus Edwards. Who the has the most total cut. yards? Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. Who catches the most passes? Austin Eckler. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. This is these three are this is a wild three pack. Uh how many of these three will you have on your team? One. Mm, one to zero. Yeah, it's one yeah, one to zero. 
Old Faithful or Old Yeller? Oh, Is Kyle. It? That's the name of this one. Oh, that's Kyle. so sad. Old Faithful or Old Yeller? These three players are going back to back in the middle of the third round. Now we're talking about the part of Old Yeller where yep. we're, we're living a great life because no. we have our best friend. Not that part. No? No. We're talking about the, the bad part. The rabies part? Yeah. There's rabies, right? Uh, I just remember he dies. Was it? Well, yeah. Okay. Moving. So Spoiler. Old, <laughs> old Faithful or Old Yeller? Travis Kelsey, Derek Henry, Mike Evans. So... 34 years old for Kelsey, 30 for Derrick Henry, 30 for Mike Evans. Where do you sit? Give me your keep trade cut. Man, this is – this is. I, I like all three of these players. I, I really do. Um, where they are going right now in the drafts, you know, back to back to back in the middle of the third round, I think is fine. I, I could see me taking any one of these players. I'm not anti any of them. That being said, Kelsey – has other options for the first time ever there's like a four or five pack of potential hopeful tight end ones you know and, and and so I don't feel the need to take him in the third round over a running back or wide receiver so I I lean Derrick Henry we've talked about him recently um Andy you brought him up on the wild was that the wild card episode or? I was no, explain I, yourself I got to explain yourself because I had him at 18 yes and you had a lot I of I got to explain yourself to <laughs> Um, and, and you had a lot of data about he needs to have an outlier season in order to be an older running back who's not catching passes who will succeed. I do think that – I mean, I, I believe that is true, but I also believe that truth happens. Uh, this is – you know, we just talked about Gus Edwards, who vacated 13 rushing touchdowns for the same team last year. Derrick Henry, greater sign Gus Edwards. So they brought him in. The depth chart there is not scary for Derrick Henry – um, I don't love older running backs changing teams, but if they are, I want them to go to the MVP of the league uh, at quarterback for a power rushing team. I, I, I'm going to take Derrick Henry over Mike Evans. So I will keep Derrick Henry. I will trade Mike Evans and I will cut Travis Kelsey. Final answer for me. I will go with the same thing. Um, I will prioritize running back in this round over wide receiver, despite obviously Mike Evans. He did get he did get his money. He delivered last year, one of the best picks in fantasy, but I can find I can find some players I have confidence in at wide receiver beyond Mike Evans at that ADP um or at ADP later on. So I'll go I'll I'll match you. Huh. I'm keeping Mike Evans. I will trade Man. I think I'm trading Derrick Henry, and I agree with the uh, the thoughts on Kelsey. There's just there's some other guys that may have a chance to knock him off being the number one. But I'm going to keep the wide receiver over as much as I believe in Derrick Henry. He still is a 30 year old running back entering year nine. All right, let's take a quick break and come back with some more. All right, we're jumping into more keep trade cut. This one is late round quarterbacks that could open the year as your starter. These are all round 10 quarterbacks. We just did a mock draft where two of these guys ended up on Jason's team. So maybe the option is you can take two, but opening schedules could be the tiebreaker between them. Jared Goff, quarterback for the Detroit Lions after the impressive season. Jaden Daniels, the rookie out of Washington, who's going to run the football, who's got an opportunity to um, probably be a better fantasy player than an NFL player in year one. And then Justin Herbert, who is being just tossed aside, just yeah, <laughs> relegated to late round. It, it brings Andy so much pain to see Justin Herbert this far back. Just me? No, not just you. It brings me pain too. Justin Herbert is oh. an actual Here, great NFL quarterback. And we, Jason and I, were talking more about this. And, you know, I think that there's a chance that Justin Herbert's just fine. And that, so as part of the answer here, you could be getting a player that is a, uh, a perennial, much higher pick that is getting discounted because of the, the situation, losing Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and the offensive structure. Or he really doesn't have anybody to throw the football to. Like, that is part of the real answer is that. Joshua Palmer, he profiles as a wide receiver 2-3 in the NFL. 
so far, Quentin Johnston profiles the wide receiver seven or eight in the NFL. Lad McConkey is a rookie. So you want to put it on. Here, here's the problem for Lad McConkey is that, okay, maybe he can have some success and be a PPR relevant player. Also, if he's their best player, you want a rookie getting the attention of the defense and the defense baiting tosses to Butterfingers outside? I mean, I if he is their best. Which one's Butterfingers? That's huge. Okay. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> Palmer's Palmer's fine. Palmer's actually a really good like wide receiver too. Palmer's just the like he's the understudy uh, for the wide receiver one and two. One hundred. Like the performance is not going to be as good, and you wished you had gotten tickets to the other show. But he's still there. Like you know, I go to a Broadway musical and I get that little slip. Yeah. And I'm disappointed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, ah, dang it. All right, bo the, bougie boy. Not everyone knows what you're talking about. All right, about. well, they, look, they, they list got, the understudy. <laughs> yeah. On that. In today's performance, the role of so and so will be played by understudy, and then it's like, oh, that stinks. But but they're they're in they're on Broadway. Yeah, that's still a talented person, and uh, this is the NFL. Palmer AKA, should, yeah, should it still be a really talented person? That's what I'm saying. Palmer yeah, is so talented, but you're it's the Broadway you're still on disappointed. Grass. It's a perfect analogy. Andy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I knew you'd be in on that one. Um, but to answer the question, I'm going to keep Jared Goff. I'm going to trade Jaden Daniels. I'm going to cut Justin <laughs> Herbert. <laughs> yes. Yes. All that, all that, like, oh, I'm so sad you Justin Herbert's down here. I'm cutting you Justin snake. Herbert. snake. He's the clear cut here. Um, also, when you're in round 10, you need to look at the opening schedule and uh, can consider that. Justin Herbert's beginning to the season scares me, and it scares me specifically because of the Vegas lines. Opens week one with the Raiders. Okay, you go. Oh, they're, 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 he he should be able to throw on them. The, the Raiders are a better defense than you think. Their team wasn't that good, but their defense was great. The over under is forty three and a half points. Not not a very you know you're not super excited about that. And if it's an easy team, what do you think Hard Dog's gonna do? He yeah. gonna run. Yeah. If they got the lead, they're gonna run the ball. So then the next week they got the Panthers. Sweet three to zero victory. Uh, probably a seventeen to zero victory where Herbert throws the ball four times. You know what I mean? Like that the the over under there is 41 and then the Steelers 42. Like it's just not exciting. For me I'm going to uh, do what I did in the mock draft. I'm going to take Jaden Daniels. Uh swing for the fences, hope that it's crazy rushing ceiling you saw. I believe it was the quarterback 7 Kyler Murray's rookie year with Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury and so I'm going to I'm going to try that first. So I will uh I will keep Jaden Daniels, cut Jared Goff or I'm sorry, cut Justin Herbert and trade Jared Goff. If I have if if this is like I'm picking one quarterback and I'm going to ride this out for the whole year, I would take the shot on Jaden Daniels. But if this is really just I want a guy to get me through the first quarter of the season, it's Jared Goff with the Rams, the Bucks, the Cardinals, the Seahawks. The average line it, over under it looks like it's the average is essentially 49 or close to 50 points here, and uh, like. I think Jared Goff is, yeah, he has really, really bad games, but I, I do think he is being underrated. And I, uh, a fun stat I had Kyle dig up this morning. Sample is unbelievably small, of course, because it's just from last year. But it's three games without David Montgomery. Their neutral pass rate jumped from fifty-seven percent to sixty-four percent. So, should should David Montgomery miss time? Like I think that this team, even despite the leadership being as high T as you can possibly get, if Jameer Gibbs is your lead running back, you're gonna throw the ball more. But aren't you saying that 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 seems like a a negative because he had that last year baked into his numbers where David Montgomery missed time. As of now, David Montgomery is there, so they should throw the ball less. No, no, no I'm saying no. But he did what he did mostly with with the full team. I'm saying where it's like when you're drafting. Jameer Gibbs, you know that if David Montgomery misses time, you have now you're going to see an uptick. I'm saying for a quarterback, if this other running back misses time, your throw, your pass rate is going to well, go up. I don't think the best argument is to talk about Montgomery missing time. I think the best argument is that Montgomery got reduced snaps. So when Montgomery doesn't get snaps over the back half of the year, last year, Gibbs is on the field more. Gibbs catches more passes. They want to use him in the passing game, and they depend on Goff more. So um, the, the Drew Brees effect. Yeah. Where you get a ton of added passing yep. value just dinking it down to Camara. All right, let's jump into the mailbag and answer a few questions from the Foot Clan. Mailbag. Maple Bay. Yow! 
Ooh. All right, if you have a question for us, you can Pisces. go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. First question, Henry in New Jersey says, oh, in a dynasty no. league, would you trade the 102 for Puka Nakua in a half PPR? What would you do, Jason? I know I know my answer. Which is so a I'll... way of saying a neighbors a Dunze. Yeah. Um or or Puka. Puka. Uh so I, I'm I'm very confident in my answer, so I, I would love to hear your guys's. Yeah, his I'm answer is Puka. I'm real confident in mine too, so I just want to check what you guys are saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm super confident if someone wants to tell me what they're doing. <laughs> I, I mean I, no, go... I I'm look, I think I think it would be stupid for anybody to answer not Puka. Because Puka's level of excellence was so high that it feels dumb to project it for one of these other players. Now, if Malik Neighbors is equal sign Jamar Chase. Yeah. And you had, you know, you go to the future and find that out. Like right now, if you say, okay, do you want Jamar Chase or Puka Nakua? I think everyone's answering Jamar Chase. Absolutely. Yep. So in that case, like if you, I don't think it's wrong to shoot your shot. And I don't know that Puka Nakua is going to do this every year, all the time. And so I, I don't mind you taking neighbors. That would be the only pick I would take the, over Puka. The range of outcomes. Sorry, not a Dunze? No. Okay. The range of outcomes um, is, is decently wide for both players. This could have been Puka Nakua's best season the rest of his career. But even if that's true, and that was his best, and now he's just a good wide receiver. We know he's a good wide receiver. Um, he's not going away, but maybe he's not a top five wide receiver ever again for fantasy. That still doesn't mean that you lose the trade taking Puka because Corey Coleman, Nikhil Harry, there are an endless list of first round highly touted wide receivers that just don't actually happen to work out. Quentin Johnston. Um, and not drafted this high, though. Not drafted that high. I mean, those yeah, I mean, they, it, it's a very small amount that are drafted at what was neighbors? Five, six? Six. Five. I just, just throwing that out there. No, I, I, I agree. That's, well, that's I literally when, looked up Corey I mean, Coleman. That's, that's when you go Corey Davis. Yeah. Uh, John Ross, Mike. Even if he's if he's Mike Williams, that's a disappointment. Right. So uh, you know, the the hope is that Neighbors is much better yeah. than than Puka Nakua. He certainly was that way in college, uh, drafted to be better than Puka Nakua. But I would definitely take Puka. We know he is great for the NFL. We know he works well with Sean McVay. He's an integral part of a great offense. I would take Puka, but valuing Puka and Kyron at this point is incredibly difficult. Is there any chance you take Puka over Marvin Harrison? I mean, a, a lot of the arguments we're making. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jay, it could be a boat. <laughs> What if he turns into Puka Nakua? <laughs> then he's just young. Guy. Like I said, valuing Puka is a near impossible. Corey task. Davis was five overall. Yep. Amari Cooper was four overall. If you have Amari Cooper's career, I'm not sure you're happier than Puka. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you draft Amari. Oh, yeah. Amari Cooper was four. Sammy Watkins was four overall. Oh, oh yeah. There brother. you go. Oh, brother. And he was, that was the that 2014. Was, he was a can't miss. But he was can't miss in the 2014 class where nobody where missed. All... <laughs> where he was, he was the only miss. Well, I guess Kelvin Benjamin ate his way out of the league or something. Oh, I don't know. Oh my gosh, oh, Boston! <laughs> I Sammy Watkins though. I just to bring it up, like I think the first year he he <clears throat> first year he played. Sammy Watkins had 128 targets. Yeah. Okay. He never touched that number again. Right. And mm -hmm. he had six touchdowns. Uh, the next year he had like nine touchdowns. But he, he's a he's a tiny little bit of a cursory tale of like you do like Bolden's best year was his rookie year. Like Sammy Watkins showed great promise his rookie year. None of them were on level with breaking the records that Puka Nakua did. But you can go sideways. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It could go sideways this year. Uh, it could absolutely go sideways this year. I mean, when I when I look at Sammy Watkins' career trajectory, 
you know, he was drafted so high, comes out, he's the wide receiver 27 his rookie year. His sophomore year, he's the wide receiver 17. You know where he's going, and it's to the moon. And he, I mean, he was never even a wide receiver three again. He was worthless the rest of his career. McKay Jordan says, would Jonathan Brooks be a good draft pick? That's just the whole question. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, uh, I'm going to answer the question. I don't, I don't think so. I uh, think he's a great draft pick, and you're using the wrong adjective. Okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Jason yeah. took him in the mock draft on Tuesday. If Jason had not, I would have selected him right there. He's like he's in the ninth round right now. That's going to go up uh, over the process of the off season, but with the with the ACL that he is recovering from, I don't know that if he that he climbs into a range where it becomes incredibly scary to draft him. Like if, I agree. If, if he jumps up into like the fourth, even though a rookie in the fourth is like that's usually smash that draft button of a, of a rookie running back. But yep. th that would be scary if he got up that high. I don't think he climbs past the sixth then be the, because then of I would the ACL, because he will get off to a slow start. Like, I don't necessarily think week one he is, you know, the clear leader. But What happens I, if they cut Miles Sanders? Oh, no. Now he's in the fourth round. Right. Don't do that. Don't Can do that. They, it, also, it also might mean that the start isn't as slow. Uh, Tommy Reed 711 says, is a 2025 first-round draft pick good value for T. Higgins in Dynasty? So I, next I'm, year's first. I'm okay with that. I would, yeah, I would offer it. I would trade my 2025 first for T. Higgins. You get a year of a player on your roster, period. It's a, a guaranteed win unless he misses I'm the season. I'm not doing it if I think my pick's in the top six. Well, it won't be after you get Higgins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me he might hit 1,000 yards? Is that what you're telling me? I am telling you he might play 17 games. Which is his only pathway to a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. He's good, man. He's, T. Higgins he's, is he's good. Fine. I think he's good. The right yeah. adjective for T. Higgins is good, not great. I agree with that, but yeah, not I mean, fine. The 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 best he's ever done was seventy four for ten ninety one and six. That's good. That's not great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if I want to settle in. Like, would you trade? Let me put it this way: Would you trade a twenty twenty five first round pick for Michael Pittman? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like just regardless of where it's landing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When, the way you said okay scared me for a second. I was like, oh no, did we just convince Andy to go do a deal? <laughs> but then I remembered. Uh, Andy no, don't, I'm not Andy doesn't have picks. I'm not negotiating live here. Okay. Um, but I but I also I think I'm aiming higher than a wide receiver, fifteen to twenty. When I'm when I'm using that pick. It, for my roster, I'm aiming higher than wide receiver 15 to 20, and that is what Higgins and Pittman are. I'm yeah. aiming higher than that with my third round picks. Doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> going to get it. So you want the um, the wide receiver two in the bag versus yeah, the, I, the I, wide receiver one in the bush? I yes. want the the wide receiver who just got a big bag of money. That that's a great way to that's a great way to put it, Andy. The, in dynasty league, I would much rather have a wide receiver two in the bag than a wide receiver one in the bush. Yeah, the bags of money. Galladay got a bag of money. James, I'm not talking jo about James Jones money. got a bag of money. Like, yeah. It's not just the bag of money. I want to know what the potential of a player is. Because to keep players around, you got to give them a bag of money. That's just how it works. So, But no, neither of those players were kept around. They went to different teams. To get their bag of money. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know. Same team makes a big <clears throat> difference. All right. Um, you answered the question. You have passed the test. All right, I think that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. A reminder, the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can go, pick it up, and use it right away. There's an app. There's a web interface, tons of tools and resources, constantly being updated. Made some tweaks to my rankings yesterday. Next week, we got some mailbag. we got some old, bland, and undervalued players and a whole lot more here on the show. So join us for that. And you can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers that'll do it goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers